Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. Now, you'll often hear flat earthers trying to claim that you never need to account for earth curvature or earth rotation when doing anything, and that means that the earth isn't curved or rotating. Now, not only is the conclusion wrong, but the initial claim that it's based on is also wrong. There are many instances where curvature and rotation have to be accounted for. Surveyors account for earth curvature in their surveys. Snipers at long ranges account for rotation. And for extremely long range projectiles such as naval artillery, both curvature and rotation of earth are accounted for. However, the other day I saw what has to be the worst rebuttal for that I think I've ever seen. It comes from a channel called Dr. Bass Ackwards, who'd posted a meme saying that being a flat earther takes a lot of courage. One of the responses on that post led to a bit of an exchange where Sean Hawkins had a go at Ironwork for not allowing him to talk about artillery needing to correct for the Earth being a rotating globe whilst on a live stream. And Bass attempts to rebut this point by claiming that any consideration made in regards to spin is for the projectile spinning rather than the Earth, and that any correction for curvature is because the projectile flies in a curved path, not that the Earth is curved. And then he tries bringing up hovering helicopters to argue that the Earth isn't moving. So with regards to artillery corrections, firstly, rotation. This is Ordnance Pamphlet 770 from the US Navy's Bureau of Ordnance. It was published in October 1941 and is a range table for the Navy's 16-inch 50 caliber guns which were fitted to their Iowa-class battleships. And of particular interest here is pages 48 and 49. Effect in yards of range due to rotation of the Earth. And page 50 deflection in yards due to rotation of Earth. And you can see the table breaks down range in yards to target, latitude north or south, and true target bearing. So whenever one of these ships was preparing to engage an enemy, firstly, they would need to know how far away the target was, which was done with a rangefinder and basic trigonometry. A rangefinder had two optical scopes spaced the known distance apart, an operator would adjust the system until both optics were aiming at the enemy, and by taking the known distance between the optics and the angle that they needed to be adjusted by, you can calculate the range. The true target bearing is the direction of the target, northeast, south, or west from your ship. So 0 and 180 degrees is directly north-south, or 90 is east-west. And then latitude is obviously the approximate latitude that you are located. So then taking this information and looking at the corresponding results in the table would tell a gunner how much correction needed to be applied to correct for Earth's rotation. For example, if the engagement was at a latitude of around 30 degrees and they were engaging a target 32,000 yards away and the target was 60 degrees true bearing, then there would be 52 yards of deflection. And you can see from the bottom of the table, positive values of deflections to the right, negative are to the left, but they're tabulated for the northern hemisphere and need to be flipped if we're in the south. So in this example, it's 52 yards to the right if we're shooting at a target in the northern hemisphere, but 52 yards to the left if we're at 30 degrees south latitude. Bass's argument that the only spin that needs to be accounted for is the spin of the projectile, like the spin of a football, ironically is completely arse backwards. He seems to be suggesting that the spin of the projectile causes an inaccuracy that needs to be corrected for. But in reality, spin is added intentionally to improve accuracy. Early guns were firing cannonballs or lead balls, that weren't a snug fit in the barrel, otherwise you'd struggle to load them. So when they were fired, they would often wobble slightly, which then meant they could fly off slightly from where they were aimed. Not a huge problem for close engagements, but when firing over a long distance, the slight randomness of a projectile's path caused more problems. This led to the development of the rifled barrel and shaped bullets. 
This would impart a rotation onto a bullet and give it essentially a gyroscopic effect to make it travel in a more consistent path. And it's the same reason that sports with shaped balls like American football and rugby sees players spin the ball when they throw it because it causes the ball to travel a straighter path with less randomness. Quarterbacks always take pride in their spiral too. You don't ever want to throw a ball that wobbles. And then we have the other page of this book, which is effect in yards of range due to Earth's rotation. So this is the rotation of Earth impacting the actual range between the two ships. So if we look at these tables, if the target is zero degrees or 180 degrees, so north or south, there's no correction applied regardless of what latitude you're at. But east or west sees the biggest corrections. 32,000 yards on the equator is 190 yards of correction being required. 187 yards at 10 degrees latitude, 179 at 20 latitude, and so on. And most importantly, the note at the bottom of the table. For bearing at the top of the table, range is increased. For bearing at the bottom, is decreased. Top of the table, we have 90 degrees, which is firing east. Bottom of the table, we have 270 degrees, which is firing west. So firing east at the equator, a target that is 32,000 yards away, you have to aim 32,190 yards. Whereas if you're firing west, the target is 32,000 yards away, you need to aim 31,810 yards. And the same thing actually impacts snipers. Here's a video of a gun range instructor explaining how depending on whether you are shooting east or west can actually cause your bullets to drop below or land above where you're aiming. So if we compare this to our other target, we're three inches high here, we're eight inches low there, that's uh, 11 inches, just over a minute of difference between just shooting from the west to the east. Because Earth's rotation is basically moving the target towards or away from the bullet as the bullet is dropping in flight. Now, let's be clear. If the Earth was stationary, warship gunners throwing in deflections and distance adjustments like this based solely on the direction you're firing would result in an awful lot of shots missing their target which is absolutely the last thing any naval command wants happening in the middle of a battle. And it's not just rotation either. They also have correction tables to account for the curvature of Earth, because aiming a naval gun is not only about the direction of the gun, but also the elevation. Hurling shells tens of thousands of yards requires a shell to be fired in an arc, so the elevation of the gun is going to directly impact the distance away that the shell lands. However, the gun elevation is referenced against the ship itself. So zero degrees elevation is horizontal to the ship. But when firing over a globe, the Earth is curving away from you. So the distance away from a ship that a shell will land is going to be different compared to if it's firing across a flat Earth. All of this used to be done manually with correction tables by people who were taking the information from rangefinders, calculating a firing solution, and then relaying that to the gunners in the turrets. However, with the development of fire control computers, all of this is now automatically corrected for when coming up with a firing solution. Much like how surveyors used to have to manually correct for the amount of earth curvature when making their readings, but now, with modern tools like total stations, the corrections are being applied automatically. Now, with regards to Bass's argument about helicopters, this is a classic misconception by flat earthers, saying the earth doesn't rotate underneath helicopters. The reality is, it does, but the difference between a helicopter and a bullet is the helicopter is receiving constant adjustments during flight by a pilot, whereas a bullet needs all its corrections made before it gets fired. Bear in mind, Bass has actually argued against his own point by saying the helicopter is hovering. To hover is to remain above the same spot. When a helicopter lands on a moving ship, it has to hover over the deck. Well, in order for a helicopter to stay hovering above a ship, it has to be moving with the ship, because the ship is the helicopter's frame of reference. Well, in this example, the Earth is its reference frame. 
So for a helicopter to hover above a moving Earth, it has to be moving with the Earth. So a rotating Earth wouldn't shift underneath a hovering helicopter because that would mean the helicopter then wasn't actually hovering. I think flat earthers expect a helicopter to take off from the equator and then have the Earth shift a thousand miles every hour underneath the helicopter. However, the helicopter is traveling at the same speed as the Earth when it takes off. So flat earthers can get their head around the idea that the globe has a radius of 3959 miles, which means a circumference of 24,875 miles. Rotating once every 24 hours it means it's rotating roughly 1,036.45 miles an hour. However, where they slip up is then factoring in the distance the helicopter would have to travel. If it was hovering one mile above the Earth, then it would have a radius from the center of the Earth of 3,960 miles. That would give a circumference of 24,881 miles. So a helicopter a mile above the Earth, circling over the equator, would only travel six miles further than a car that was driving around the equator. So compared to a complete circle of 24,881 miles in 24 hours, is only a quarter of a mile an hour difference. Meaning, if a helicopter took off from the equator, flew straight up one mile in the air, and parked in a cloud for one full hour, and then dropped back down again, assuming there was absolutely no wind at all, the helicopter would have only have moved a quarter of a mile from where it took off. Of course, in reality, the effect of wind is far greater. So a helicopter sitting in a cloud for an hour and then finding itself a quarter of a mile away from where it started would just get chalked up to the wind causing them to drift. However, pilots do have to actively correct for Earth's rotation. This book I have called Global Navigation for Pilots actually details the process that pilots who are flying manually have to take every 15 minutes or so to correct for the impact of Earth's rotation on their course. Again, not something that you want to be doing if the Earth isn't actually rotating, because correcting for something that doesn't exist will wind up with you getting lost. But that's going to be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please do consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.